Welcome back to Building Character, where we figure out how to play as your favorite fictional characters in Dungeons & Dragons. Remember to like and subscribe to hold your breath longer. Maybe. Actually, that's not a fun joke. Please don't try and hold your breath longer. With the Ghosts of Salt Marsh upon us, I think it's time we made the ultimate naval character, Aquaman. Now, I haven't really read into Salt Marsh yet. A friend of mine is running it for me, and I don't want spoilers, but I'm pretty sure permanent water breathing and swimming would prove useful. There are boats on the cover. Ocean Man. Let's start off with our goals for this build. First, we need to talk to fish, and I don't want anyone pointing out the technicalities of fish talking. Aquaman talks to fish, it's cool, and trying to qualify it with water telepathy makes it sound insecure. Next, we need to kick ass. That's kind of broad, so let's call it taking hits and dishing hits out. Finally, we have to make sure that we're comfortable in water, so swimming speed and water breathing are a must. For stats, we're using the standard pointer array from the player's handbook. Roll if you want, just make sure you have plenty of dex and wisdom. Even though we need those for multi-classing, strength is number one here. Sure, Arthur is nimble, but the damage is coming from those giant arms. Wisdom next to animal handling needs to be basically 100% effective. Talking to fish may be his power, but it's really impressive that they always do what he asks. Dexterity will follow, like I said, he's pretty nimble with all that mass. Constitution after that, he still has plenty of mass despite being so nimble. Charisma is on the lower end, I'd like it to be higher, we just need other stuff more. And finally we'll dump intelligence, Batman has that covered, you just need to hit stuff. Tritons from Volo's Guide to Monsters are fully based off of Atlanteans. You get plus one strength, constitution, and charisma, and you're an emissary of the sea, letting you communicate simple ideas with beasts that live underwater, though you can't understand them yet. We'll get there. You're also a guardian of the depths, giving you resistance to cold damage and making you immune to the adverse effects of being deep in the water. Finally, you're amphibious, letting you breathe underwater and giving you a swimming speed of 30 feet. For your background, take Noble, you are the king after all. This gives you history and persuasion proficiencies. We'll kick things off as a revised ranger. Remember, this is from an unearthed arcana, not the player's handbook. You can take three skills from their list, go for athletics, animal handling, and perception. You get a favorite enemy that you have advantage on tracking with survival checks and deal an extra two damage to. Humanoids tend to be the one messing with the oceans, I'd go for them. You're also a natural explorer, letting you ignore difficult terrain, you have advantage on initiative rolls, and advantage on creatures who haven't acted an initiative yet. Arthur tends to be itching for a fight at any given moment, so get him in there. Second level rangers get a fighting style. We'll go for Duelist, which gives you plus two to damage when you're wielding a weapon one-handed. This is a good time to talk about the Trident, a very weird weapon in D&D. Its base damage is 1d6, but it's versatile, so you can bump that up to 1d8 if you use it with both hands. Now we want a free hand to cast some spells later, so we're going to go with Duelist and just make that a consistent plus two. It also has the Throne property, which means that you can throw it at someone 20 feet away from you, or up to 60 feet with disadvantage. Throne weapons can use your strength modifier, which is better for us. You also get some spells at this level. Animal Friendship lets you charm an animal that fails a wisdom save of 8, plus your proficiency and your wisdom modifier. This lasts for up to 24 hours, as long as one of your allies doesn't attack them. I'd like to point out there isn't a challenge rating maximum on this, so giant sharks and whales will still be your buddy with a first level spell. There's also Speak with Animals that lets you speak with animals for 10 minutes. You can cast it as a ritual by spending 10 minutes to cast it, so you don't technically have to use a spell slot and can do it as much as you want. Third level rangers get primeval awareness, letting you communicate simple ideas with beasts and figure out how to keep them calm. You can also spend a minute to figure out how many of your favorite enemy are within a five mile radius of you and if they're moving in any direction. Maybe you're reading the vibrations of the waves, the flavor's up to you. You can also pick a conclave. The hunter conclave makes you an expert at dealing with unusual foes. The colossus slayer ability lets you deal an extra 1d8 damage to creatures below their hit point maximum once per round. Aquaman isn't shying away from the bigger baddies. You can also grab another spell, jump triples your jump distance. This guy flies out of the water, it's good for mobility. Fourth level rangers can grab a feat. Animal Handler from the Feats for Skills on Earth Arcana gives you plus one wisdom, expertise in the animal handling skill, meaning double your proficiency bonus, and you can command a friendly beast as a bonus action as long as it isn't working for someone else. Technically, this works for all animals, not just fish, so you actually get a little buff over accurate Aquaman, which is nice. Fifth level rangers get an extra attack, letting you attack twice instead of once as an action. You can also learn second level ranger spells, but I don't really like any of these for Arthur. Animal Messenger sounds like it might be in character, but Aquaman can't speak through animals. Instead, grab Hunter's Mark from the first level. So lets you pick a target to deal an extra d6 damage shoot with your weapon attacks for up to an hour. If you kill the creature in that time, you can move it to another creature as a bonus action. This brings your trident up to the level it should be. It's a legendary symbol of royalty. 1d6 is not enough. 
Six level rangers get improved favorite enemy, increasing your bonus damage to four instead of plus two. You get advantage on saving throws from spells and effects of your favorite enemies, and you get to pick another type. I'd go for constructs. I don't know. Robots attack in the ocean seems like it happens a lot. Seventh level hunter conclave rangers can pick a defensive tactic. Steel will gives you advantage on saving throws against being frightened. Between this and your high wisdom, you shouldn't fear anything. Aquaman doesn't run away from a brawl. Eighth level rangers get fleet of foot, letting you dash as a bonus action so you can do that crazy sonic boom swimming thing he does. You can also grab another feat, and the tough feat gives you plus two HP for every level you have and every level you get. Considering you can almost hold your own against Superman, you need some thick skin. Our final level of ranger gives us third level spells, and conjure animals summons a number of beasts up to challenge rating two. So one beast of two, two beasts of one, four beasts of one half, or eight beasts of one fourth. These hang out for an hour and follow your orders. Technically, it says that the DM has the stats, but be a good player and have these ready, it can be kind of a pain for them. So this can be sharks, dolphins, crabs, plesiosaurs. That's right, you can get a freaking Loch Ness monster at your disposal, depending on what the DM determines is reasonable for that area. We'll finish this build off with fighter levels as the back half of Ranger really leans more into roguish stuff and Aquaman isn't into sneaking. First level fighters get a fighting style. The Mariner fighting style gives you plus one to your AC, climbing speed, and swimming speed equal to your normal speed, as long as you're wearing medium armor or lower. I'd say scale mail is appropriate as your armor is literally scales. It makes your AC 14 plus your dex modifier with a cap of plus two and then plus one from Mariner. You also get second wind letting you heal 1d10 plus your fighter level as a bonus action once per long rest whether you're at the bar or in the ring Arthur Curry is always down for another round. Second level fighters get Action Surge, letting you make an extra action once per long rest. Remember, you're making two attacks with your action, so that's four with an Action Surge. I know we dumped Intelligence, so I'll do that complicated math for you. Third level fighters can choose a Martial Archetype, and the Champion is simple, but it's effective. With Improved Critical, you get a critical hit on 19 as well as a 20. Now that doubles all of your damage dice, so Hunter's Mark and Colossus Slayer get included for some big old hits. Fourth level fighters get an Ability Score Improvement. Bump that strength so you can lift a submarine. Swimming is great exercise. Fifth level fighters get nothing, you already got extra attack from ranger, I'm sorry, but sixth level fighters get another ability score improvement so you can cap your strength. This will give you a plus five damage bonus for each hit or plus nine to your favorite enemy. You've got to love a consistent modifier, especially when you roll like I do. Seventh level champions are remarkable athletes, letting you add half your proficiency bonus to strength, constitution, and dexterity checks you don't have proficiency with. And you can add your strength modifier to your horizontal jump distance, making it 25 feet without the jump spell and 75 with the jump spell if you dash as your action or bonus action. Swim like a fish, jump like a bunny on steroids. Eighth level fighters get another ability score improvement round up your constitution and dexterity for more AC and HP. Should be able to take a hit even if you don't have to. Ninth level fighters get indomitable, letting you re-roll a failed saving throw once per long rest so you can stay up and in the fight as long as possible. Tenth level champions can grab another fighting style defense adds one to your AC while you're wearing armor, making yours 18 with your scale mail so you can shrug off any hit your baby brother's throwing at you. Our capstone is fighter level 11, which gives us another extra attack, and this actually does stack with the original, giving you three attacks per round, adding a lot of extra damage. Now that we've hit level 20, let's figure out how good of a build this is. First, you can deal some great damage with a plus seven damage modifier against regular enemies and plus 11 against your favorite enemies with three attacks per round. You'll show everyone not to mess with the ocean. You're also great at working with animals, which can help out with the initiative count or help you gather intel outside of combat. Finally, you've got no disadvantages in the water, which is an advantage over most other enemies in the water. Unfortunately, aquatic combat doesn't show up a lot in most games, so this build doesn't really get to shine in deserts or forests. You also wasted a whole level in fighter due to ranger fighter double up, which is never fun. Finally, your range option has a 60 foot max range and disadvantage outside of 20 feet, meaning flying foes could cause problems. Remember how you have those insane jumping and climbing skills? move anywhere, kill everything, and prove that the King of Atlantis is also its strongest fighter. Just remember your adventure may take you out of your home and it can be rough being a fish out of water. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, subscribe for more. We make two builds every week. Come back next week for a bounty hunter with many clients and another that only has one.